Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan here. So now I'm going to start the next topic in Sale of Goods Act 1930. In this video, I'm going to explain you about unpaid seller. Who is an unpaid seller? And what are the rights available to unpaid seller? So till the last video, I have completed so many topics on this Sale of Goods Act. I've explained you the meaning of the term contract of sale. What are the essentials of contract of sale, valid sale. Then I've explained you difference between sale and agreement to sell. I've explained you goods and what are the different types of goods. Then I've explained you about uh, conditions and warranties, differences, implied conditions, warranties I have explained. And last video I have explained you about caveat emptor and what are the exemptions to the doctrine of caveat emptor. So if you are regularly watching all those videos, now you are in a good position to write in examination on this subject of business law. So first time if you are on, uh, on my channel, I suggest you to visit the playlist of my channel. I have uploaded so many videos on different subjects like financial accounting, advanced accounting, cost accounting, corporate accounting, advanced corporate accounting, managerial accounting, income tax and uh, business statistics, financial management, investment management, so many videos I've uploaded. Select your subject, select the video, watch till the end, definitely it, you can enhance your knowledge. Now I'm going to start unpaid seller. Now in the previous examinations, in most of the examinations, they have asked the question regarding who is an unpaid seller and what are the rights available to unpaid seller. So watch with full concentration. Unpaid seller. When the buyer does not pay the entire price, when the buyer does not pay the entire price to the seller, the seller will be called unpaid seller. That's it. When the buyer does not pay the entire price to the seller, the seller will be called unpaid seller. So according to section 45 of the Sale of Goods Act, the seller of goods is deemed to be an unpaid seller in two circumstances. So the law, the Sale of Goods Act under section 45, it says a seller will be called as unpaid seller under two circumstances. What are the two circumstances? First one, when the whole of the price has not been paid or tendered, the law says a seller will be called unpaid seller when the whole of the price is not paid or not tendered by the buyer first case second case when a bill of exchange or any other negotiable instrument has been received as conditional payment but the instrument was dishonored second case says if a bill of exchange or any other negotiable instrument has been given by the buyer given by the buyer as a conditional payment but that instrument was dishonored, the bill was dishonored, the promissory note was dishonored. In that case also, the seller will be called a unpaid seller. So these two cases are there to make the seller unpaid seller. Now, rights of an unpaid seller. So first of all, I have explained you who is an unpaid seller. Now I am coming to the right. Unpaid seller means when the buyer has not paid the entire amount to the seller, the seller is called unpaid seller. Or according to section 45 of the Sale of Goods Act, this is a seller will be deemed to be a seller in two cases. First, when the whole price is not paid. Second, when bill of exchange or any other negotiable instrument has been given by the buyer as a conditional payment. But that instrument was dishonored. In that case, the seller will be called deemed. Uh, the seller will be called unpaid seller. That's it. Now, rights of unpaid seller. What are the rights given by the law, by the Sale of Goods Act to the unpaid seller? The rights of an unpaid seller. The Sale of Goods Act has expressly given two kinds of rights to unpaid seller. Now, watch carefully. Listen carefully the lecture. Two kinds are two express rights are given by the sale of goods act to the unpaid seller the first right right against the goods second right against the buyer personal that means if i am the unpaid seller the law has given me two rights the first right right against the goods sold second right against the person who is the person here buyer 
right against the buyer. So two rights the unpaid seller is having. One by one we'll discuss. First, right against the goods. Right against the goods. So right against the goods, this can again be divided into two heads. Rights when ownership is transferred and rights when ownership is not transferred. That means rights against the goods divided into two, two categories. The first category when the ownership is already transferred to the buyer. Second when ownership is not transferred to the buyer. Then in these two cases, what are the rights? I am going to explain you now. Rights when ownership is transferred. This one. Rights when ownership is transferred. So in this case, an unpaid seller has the right even if the property in goods has been transferred to the buyer. See here. If I am the unpaid seller, I have already transferred the ownership to the buyer. Already ownership has been transferred to the buyer. Still I am having three rights. The unpaid seller is having three rights when when the ownership is already transferred to the buyer. So what are the three rights? First one, right of lien. Second, right of stoppage in transit. Right for resale. Right to resale. So these three rights the unpaid seller is having against against the unpaid against the buyer when the ownership is already transferred. So one by one we'll discuss a right of lien. Lien means possession, withhold, withholding. The term lien means the right to retain possession of goods until payment of the price. Retaining. Already ownership is transferred, but possession is in the hands of the seller, unpaid seller. I'm the unpaid seller. You are the buyer. You have defaulted. So I am first right I am having is a lien of the goods. Lien of the goods means I am possessing the goods. Ownership are transferred but still goods are in my control. Possession is mine. In that case the term lien means right to retain possession of goods until the payment is made. An unpaid seller can exercise this lien only in the following cases. So this lien, right of lien can be exercised only under three cases. What are the three cases? Where the goods have been sold without any stipulation as to credit. That means no credit period has been allowed by the seller to the buyer. Normally what will happen if the seller allows a credit period to the buyer two months, one month, three months. In that case right of lien cannot be exercised. The right of lien can be exercised only when no credit period is allowed to the buyer. Second one, where the, when the goods have been sold on credit but the period of credit has been expired. Second situation, the, credit, the goods are sold to the buyer on credit, on credit but the credit period was expired. Here also he is having the right of lien, right of lien, possessing, retaining the possession. The so first, the unpaid seller can retain the possession, lien, when, if, the goods are sold not on credit. Second, if the goods are sold on credit but the credit period was expired. And third one where the buyer becomes insolvent. When the unpaid seller knows that the buyer has become insolvent then definitely right of lien. Right of lien. That means the unpaid seller will retain the position, will not give the position, will not give the position of the goods. So these are the three cases. So again I repeat, right against two types of rights the unpaid seller is having. The one first right is right against the goods. Second right against the buyer. So first of all we are discussing about right against goods. So rights against goods are again classified into two where the ownership is transferred and where ownership is not transferred. So one by one we have to study. So first we will take where ownership is already transferred. When the ownership is already transferred. In that case three cases will arise. Right of lien, right of stoppage in transit and right of resale. So first right of lien. 
lean means retaining the position of the goods that means the position is not given to the buyer retaining the position that is called lean that right of lien is having with the unpaid seller but provided three conditions are given. The first condition goods must be sold not on credit. Second goods must be maybe sold on credit but the credit period was expired. Third one when the buyer has become insolvent. If the, in these three cases the unpaid seller is having the right of lien. Now lien depends on lien depends on the physical position of the goods. Once the position is lost, the lien is also lost. So unpaid seller loses his right of lien. That means the lien will depend on position. Suppose if the position has also been given to the buyer. In that case, there is no right of lien. Example, I have sold, I am the unpaid seller. I have sold the goods to a buyer. Along with ownership, I have already transferred the position also. I have given the position. When I have given the position, I loses the right of lien. I don't have the right of lien. Next, right of stoppage in transit. This is the second right. This is the second right. Right of stoppage in transit when the ownership is transferred. Now, the right of stoppage of goods while they are in the position of a carrier is known as right of stoppage in transit. That means the right to stop the goods in transit. The goods has been dispatched by the seller to the destination of the buyer. But the still the goods are in transit. The goods have not reached the place of the buyer. It is in the transit. In that case, the unpaid seller will have the right to stop that uh, goods and take it back. So this right can be exercised in the following cases again. Just like lean. The right of stoppage in transit, some conditions are given. When the unpaid seller can stop the goods in transit, first, the seller must be unpaid. Naturally, then only he will have the right. The seller must be unpaid. Second, the buyer must be insolvent. Very important condition you have to remember. The unpaid seller will have the right to stop the goods in transit if the buyer has become insolvent. Third one, the seller must have been parted with the position of goods. Parted means given. The seller have already handed it over the goods to a carrier. To a carrier. So already dispatch the goods. The goods must be in the transit. The goods must not have reached the place of the buyer. If the goods have already reached the place of buyer, then he does not have the right of stoppage in transit. Next one, the buyer must not have acquired the goods, that is goods should be in transit. When these conditions are satisfied, then the unpaid seller will have the right to stop the goods in transit. So these cases we are studying, that means the unpaid seller is having the right against goods. When right against goods, two situations may arise. First, when ownership is transferred. Second, when ownership is not transferred. First, when ownership is transferred to the buyer, in that case, three situations, three rights the unpaid seller will have. The first right, right of lien. Lien means withholding, retaining the position. So again, when the re uh, lien can be retained, three cases I've explained. The lien can be exercised only when the goods are sold, not on credit. Secondly, if it is sold on credit, but the credit period has expired or if the buyer has become insolvent. If these three conditions are satisfied, any one of these three conditions are satisfied, the unpaid seller will have the right to lien. Now, right to stoppage in transit. Transit means already the unpaid seller have dispatched the goods, but the goods have not reached the place of buyer. It is in the on the way. Then the unpaid seller will have the right to stop the goods and take it back. So again, conditions are given. Now, right of resale, third right, third and last right is right of resale. The unpaid seller will have the right to resale when the unpaid seller can resell the goods in the following cases. Again, conditions are given. Only in these conditions, the unpaid seller will have the right to resell the goods to any other person. When, where the goods are of perishable nature, first condition. 
if the goods are perishable in nature so we cannot wait till the time the buyer will come and make the payment and take the goods till that time the goods goods will be completely perished so if the goods are perishable then the seller unpaid seller will have will have the right to resell the goods to resell the goods second where the seller expressly reserves the right of resale in case of buyer makes a default in the payment price according to the terms of the agreement if in the agreement it is already expressly given that seller said to the buyer if you do not pay the price i am having the right to resell the goods this condition already it is specified in the agreement expressly in that case the unpaid seller will have the right to resell the goods third one where the unpaid seller has exercised his right of right of lien or stoppage and transit and gives notice to the buyer of his intention to sell the goods now the unpaid seller has already exercised the right of lien or right of stoppage in transit any one of the right already exercised after exercising these two right any one of these two right right of lien or right of stoppage in transit after exercising this right the unpaid seller will give a notice to the buyer that if you do not make the payment within a so and so period i am going to resell the goods a notice has been given giving a certain time period then the seller is bound to give reasonable notice to the buyer stating that he is going to resell the goods if the buyer fails to pay the price of goods the, within the reasonable time the seller may resell the goods after giving a notice to the buyer the seller will wait then if no response is received from the buyer the seller will have the right to resell the goods so these are the conditions when the unpaid seller will have the right to resell first one when the goods are perishable in nature second one when there is a express uh, contract express i mean clause given in the agreement when sale agreement specifically it is given that if the buyer does not pay the price the seller will have the right to resell the goods in that case the seller will have the right thirdly if the unpaid seller has already exercised the option the right of lien or the right of stoppage in transit then after stopping in transit the unpaid seller will give a notice to the buyer that within so and so period you have to pay the price and take your goods otherwise i am going to resell it after giving due notice if no response is received from the buyer the seller can resell the goods so over so these three cases i have explained you that the rights against the goods and ownership has been transferred right against the goods and ownership has been transferred when ownership is transferred three rights right of lien right of stoppage in transit and right of resell now i am coming to the next point called right when ownership is not passed when ownership here you can say two rights rights when ownership is transferred and rights when ownership is not transferred i have completed this part rights when ownership is transferred now i'm explaining about right when ownership is not transferred in that case it's very simple case when the property in goods has not been transferred to the buyer the unpaid seller has the right to withhold the delivery of the goods until the price is paid so if the ownership is not transferred if the ownership is not transferred in that case the unpaid seller will ask the buyer pay the price and take the goods otherwise i am not going to dispatch the goods that's all. now right against the buyer i have completed right against the goods now unpaid seller is having a right against the buyer what are the rights against buyer these rights are called rights in personam personam means person right against the person who is the person buyer is the person so unpaid seller is having the right against the person not against the goods already i have discussed about the goods the person so these are suit for price that means the unpaid seller will drag the buyer in a court of law Be, uh, bring a suit uh, i mean bring a suit for the price 
am the unpaid seller the buyer has not paid me the price i will drag the buyer into the court of law and present the matter to the court of law that this person has purchased the goods from me and he has not paid the price then the court will give the direction and ask the buyer to make the payment so when the property in the goods has been passed to the buyer and the buyer wrongfully neglects or refuses to pay the goods the seller can sue the buyer for the price of the goods if the buyer neglects or refuses to make the payment then the seller will have the right against the person to in a court of law second sued for damages for non acceptance of goods sometimes an unpaid seller has already given the goods to the buyer but the buyer refuses to accept the goods already agreement was over ownership is transferred ownership is transferred but possession is not transferred now the buyer is sending the goods to uh, seller is sending the goods to the buyer but buyer refuses to accept the goods refuses to accept the goods in that case also the unpaid seller will drag him in a court of law for damages so where the buyer wrongfully neglects or refuses to accept the goods and pay for them the seller may sue for damages for non acceptance then third one sued for damages for repudiation of contract before due date sometimes the buyer will repudiate the contract reject to the contract before the due date before the due date in that case also the unpaid seller will bring in a court of law and claim damages from the person where the buyer repudiates the contract before the due date of delivery of goods the seller may treat the contract as cancelled and sue for damages so before the due date the buyer will uh, i mean give notice to the seller that i don't want to, to buy the goods he is cancelling the contract when he is cancelling the contract the unpaid seller will ask him to pay damages because he has breached the contract next last one sued for interest and special damages sometimes different laws have given different provisions regarding interest to be paid to the unpaid seller then uh, interest to be paid or special damages are also paid if in a particular law special damages are available to the unpaid seller then definitely unpaid seller can claim special damages from the buyer the seller may recover interest or special damages in any case where by law interest or special damages may be recoverable if any any other law he is having the right to get the special damages he can be able to recover it that's all ha so in this video i have explained you in detail regarding the meaning of the term unpaid seller who is an unpaid seller and what are the rights he is having for unpaid seller so expressly the sale of goods act has expressly given two rights right against the goods right against the person again right against the goods are of two type when ownership is transferred when ownership is not transferred if ownership is transferred three rights he is having right of lien right of stoppage in transit and right of resell right of resell ha huh? if ownership is not transferred only one right he is having that means he will uh, ask the buyer to pay the price and take the ownership if you don't pay the price you will not get the ownership that's it and what are the rights against the person rights against personam so i will explain you right uh, price suit for price suit for damages for non acceptance suit for damages for repudiation of the contract and suit for interest and special damages that's all. so this is the end of this video so if you are satisfied if you think that these videos are increasing your knowledge you are uh, seeing some benefit from these videos so give a like to the video share my channel in your group in your friend circle so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge give your comments on these videos and lastly don't forget to subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed inshallah we'll take up the next topic in the next video